Have you ever heard of Schrodinger's cat? You put a cat in a box of something deadly, like a venomous cobra. And because you can't see into the box, that cat is both alive and dead until you open the box and observe what, if anything, has happened. Shit, body. It's a bit of a disturbing metaphor for quantum mechanics, and it was created by a professor, Erwin Schrodinger, in an attempt to help his students understand the idea that until a quantum particle is interacted with and observed, it can exist in multiple states. I love this idea for a jumping off point of a psychological horror story. In the first gray matter, we found horror by breaking the laws of Euclidean geometry. Now for the second time around, I want to break the laws of quantum mechanics and make something even scarier. So inside Schrodinger's box, the cat is both alive and dead. But what if our characters found themselves inside Schrodinger's apartment, where things are either alive or dead or in a thousand states of superposition until they're observed? So if the characters look away, if for a moment they fall into darkness, they enter that quantum void and are lost forever. I need to film three people with flashlights walking around. The only place big enough to film that, that we have control over, is our studio. But the problem is it's filled with big skylights and white walls, and to make that into a black void almost seems like an impossible task. Even if we cover the skylights and turn off all the lights, if I film somebody in the studio, you'll still see a white wall behind them because there's still enough light somehow infiltrating that room. The thing is, buying professional film curtains is pretty expensive beyond the means of our budget here. But there's a certain kind of fabric that we can get, a fabric that is flocking, basically where they pull up little threads and that flocking really absorbs light. It makes the fabric not shiny at all. And we happen to be right next to the Fabric District, which is like a world famous textile wholesale area in Los Angeles where all the fabric comes in from overseas and you can go and get everything at wholesale prices. So JC is gonna go down there and find some really good black fabric that we can make our own curtains with. After that's all done, she's then going to take it over to a seamstress who will sew it all together according to our specifications. So we have two 15 feet long 12 feet high curtains with a little loop-de-loop -loop at the top. We'll rig it up on the PVC pipes, throw it up on light stands, and hopefully they'll give us a 360 degree wall that absorbs all light. In the world of gray matter, each room in that building is a different kind of paranormal manifestation. They've gone from an infinite non-Euclidean hallway and they've broken into apartment five. What I like is that it's a hoarder's apartment, right? If for this to be scary, you know, we have to have this sense of like we're in a space, but it's shifting and you know, it's this endless void where like our flashlights illuminate the reality and the further we go into it, the more it just becomes this endless sea of random garbage that we just go into. How do I do that? Just go out and raid a bunch of dumpsters? Well, no, because the garbage needs to be safe. It can't have anything sharp or hard in it. It needs to not be smelly and gross. It needs to be sanitary. Thing is, stuff is kind of expensive and hard to come by and we need to take up a lot of space. And so we're trying to come up with like the most cheapest and authentic looking ways of taking up space for the scene of garbage. But currently we have kiddie pools to kind of keep the garbage gathered around the actors. So you'd be like, action, and it's like, oh, there's so much garbage here. Whoa, it's just full of garbage. That's hopefully the illusion we're gonna sell by using these kind of kiddie pools to at least hold a pile around the actor. Everybody here at Corridor is annoyed with me right now because they have to wade through garbage in Studio 4. You've probably seen visual effects artists react episodes with the piles of garbage in the background. <laughs> Sometimes our sets are super cool. Sometimes they're just big piles of garbage. All right, so the set is ready. Now the real question of, of truth is, will it be pitch black when we turn the lights off? Three, two, one. <laughs> is it pitch black on your camera? I mean, it's pitch black on camera, yeah. I can't see anything. All right, great. You did it. Nice. Woo! It looks good. It looks good. Our ears are covered. My eyes are covered. It's dark. It's actually going to be hard to move around this place. That's going to be the hardest. All right, clear smoke. Three, two, one, action. Please, stay one here. Please. All right, that was great, guys. Good performance. Uh, Sam, how did it look? Um. Um. See, we're looking at a pretty intense cinematography problem right now. We have characters wearing black costumes against a black backdrop lit with only their flashlights. Basically, it's a recipe to get nothing on camera. So Sam had the idea to film all the characters from a raised perspective, which means if we can art direct our garbage to kind of be white and bright colored, that paper cups, styrofoam containers, we'll be able to frame our characters against it and have them stand out. 
Looking at the footage, it worked out pretty great. We can see the characters pretty well. The flash bits are working fantastically for lighting things. The high angles are working great. A little bit of smoke is also working wonderfully for keeping things compelling and interesting. I mean, look, the black curtain works great for the mediums, the closes. Those are only half the shots, though. You need some wide angle shots. The one big point of criticism that I keep getting is that it's feeling constrained. So, yeah, it's a little constrained there, you know? I mean, our studio is only so big. Let's be honest, this video requires an unrealistic amount of garbage. Even the widest of angles we got uh, still wasn't enough trash. No, you're, you're right. There's no real wide shots. We have ways we can do set expansions. So the idea here is to take your footage and extend the edges of the footage using really whatever technique you want. So we're gonna turn to our old trusty photo scans. We're gonna photo scan that garbage. It's plastic, it's like the easiest shader to do, make it kind of shiny, and Dean has done that. And so all that garbage in the background is 3D model being lit in Blender. Hey, that looks good, he did it. Yeah, he did. We need even more trash. <laughs> Can you AI this even bigger? So Runway ML dropped this whole video extension feature where it can outfill a video. And it happened to work out perfectly with our cinematography for Grey Matter where it could extend the fields of garbage. So you take the shot and then you do process it once vertically and then once horizontally. Yep. Ah. <laughs> There's too much sand. Currently Generation 3 Alpha Turbo is working at maximum capacity for generating garbage. It's temporally cohesive, spatially aware garbage. <laughs> Maybe we've found AI's true purpose, which is to generate trash. <laughs> so it's that Christmas slash Hanukkah slash Festivus slash Winter Solstice time of year, and you might be looking for some gifts for somebody. And if somebody's looking for some shoes, consider getting them a pair of Vessies. I think they will like it, honestly, because they're super comfortable. I can slip them on and off, and they are weatherproof, specifically waterproof. So when I'm going outside, filming things, getting messy, I don't need to worry about the shoes. I can just walk in that water. It's like having boots on, but it's also like having socks on at the same time. They're very comfortable. I have a pair of Vessies from when we did our first brand integration with them, and I am still wearing those Vessies. So today I'm wearing the Stormburst High Tops, which are a more athletic kind of Vessie. They give you some ankle support. They still offer you that unisock design that gives you a full waterproof covering around your foot. You know, I can't help but notice these are a little dirty. I think we should go wash them off. Oh yeah, well that's easy, dude. Just hose them off. Yeah, there's no better feeling than giving somebody a gift that they like actually use. So give your loved ones some comfy dry feet this holiday season. Vessi's waterproof collection starts at $99 and you can check it out at Vessi.com. And they are comfy, versatile, stylish, all in one shoe. Vessi, thanks so much for being an awesome sponsor of our channel for all these years. Wait, nice and clean. That? Now they're wet and muddy. But you know what? This goes to show you guys that these are real shoes. You can actually wear them, they're comfortable. I recommend them. I can buy any shoe I want, but I still use those. So, don't really know what else to say in an advertisement other than that. Like, what else can I say? There we go, that's looking good. There's like shadows and flashlights moving on it. So in the middle here is the clip that I've fed in. And the bottom and the top here are the generated parts. Now the top's not that big of a deal. It's gonna be a black sky at some point here. Take note of the fact that the handheld camera motion is cohesively attached to the ground here. The most impressive thing to me in all of this is the shadows and lighting and how it's propagating the flashlight shadows and the shadows of the garbage as the characters move. It's really crazy. It's very generalized, it's not exact, but it's definitely good enough to sell the effect. So now I take that shot and I run it through horizontal expansion to get my full frame, which I have here. There's a pile of macaroni on this garbage. <laughs> now it's getting bright and colorful, but that's fine. Like this is, this is where the compositing, the visual effects part comes into play. Here's my original shot. Here's my hyper expanded shot. I want to keep the center of this video clip, the high quality master footage, full res, all that good stuff. So I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to put it right over that AI generated outfill edge. So I have my high quality video in the center and a little bit of that extension around the edges. This AI stuff is basically just another asset. It's like going and buying a bullet hit asset or buying a 3D asset from a 3D store. It's just another element that you as an artist still need to take and incorporate it into your vision. It's, it's CGI is great for a lot of things. Practical is great for a lot of things. Same stuff goes for, you know, AI generated things. And AI carries so much baggage over those two words, two letters, and they're used interchangeably for like a billion different things. And so it's kind of a, a tired thing at this point. In this case, I'm repeating some visual patterns at the edge of the frame. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there you go. That's, that's all, you know, generated the edges right there, including that lens flare. Sick. The one thing that's worth pointing out that is pretty cool is watch the left here at the flashlight when D is moving his gun around and the shadow there. That's all just dynamically being generated based on the video. That's crazy. This is the trashiest AI generated shot I've ever seen. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. No sign of the kids.
but it's gone. Huh? All right, the monster, the most important thing of any horror piece. Here's my idea. It's a quantum zombie, Schrodinger's zombie here. Every time you fire a gun, the muzzle flash lights up the space. You can see that monster for that one fraction of a second and it goes dark. And every time you flash your light again, it's closer and closer and closer. So how am I gonna do this? Well, remember that muzzle flash simulator light that I built? It was for this project. Nico did all this work to engineer this awesome muzzle flash light and now we get to put it in action in a real short film. I hope it works. It's maybe a sensitive 25, 24. If this is on, which it is. Nope, not yet. Nope, not yet. Smooth up. Next <laughs> move. There it is. Louder. Yeah. Whip up. There it is. Woo. Shout out to Evike. Thank you for all the airsoft gear over the years and now. And every time he shoots that airsoft pistol, a real light that we built will trigger and flash. And that'll give us accurate lighting on set with the garbage and gear. Hell yeah, that looks sweet. Dude, that looks sweet. It looks really good. The uh, light fell off. Oh! <laughs> Would you have a glow finger? Wow. Three, two, one, action. It's so hard to tell your arms not to move with your legs. I'm not gonna move my arms. Oh my, my God. Arms. Yeah, 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 yeah. And three, two, one, action. That that was good. That, that was, was good. good. Woo. Yeah. Alright, so here's the footage we got in set. And you know the muscle flashlight worked like a freaking champ. Never missed a shot, nice illumination, and it felt great on set. Shooting an airsoft gun and having the whole place flash, it's just, it's a really cool feeling. So I have a vision in my mind, and, and this is very much not it. What I want here is that every time the gun flashes, I want the zombie in a different position. So I've actually gone and taken some pictures of JC in her zombie costume. I'm just doing a really, really fast magic mask here, and I'm just moving it around in here until I find it in the right spot where I want it to be. So from there, I kick the shout out to Matt, who's going to be doing the muzzle flashes and final zombie positions, as well as out to Dean, who's going to do the backgrounds and in parallel, we'll bring it all together and see how it looks. All right, Dean, how's it going? So you came up with a strategy to give us shape-shifting apartment backgrounds without having to like model 20 of them. How did you do that? We have really basic geometry in here of this apartment with some trash on the ground. And I have a separate camera off to the side, a separate 3D static camera. With this camera, we can basically look in 3D at the depth information. Black is closest to the camera, white is farthest from the camera. What I do then is I go into Staple Fusion and I give it this as kind of like a mold. It's like, hey, take all your AI stuff and shove it into the constraints I've given you. And with that, I get a bunch of images of apartments. <laughs> so you can see gross. they're all super <laughs> gross, but all have the same kind of structure. You yeah. can see there's like that doorway or sometimes it's interpreted as a wall, the same cabinet, but it has totally different uh, Appliances textures. and textures, yeah. Yeah, which is, again, in 3D, I would have to have like multiple different physically based materials to apply to each moment even though this is 20 frames we just we just need it to pop in the background and and people will fill in the rest with their imagination so now with that image i can go back into that camera and i can then project those ai images back onto the geometry so it all stays like physically based in the camera i will say watching this i feel like it's all working the monster feels a lot better than it did when there's just somebody running through garbage this is pretty this is almost exactly what i was imagining the scene is looking pretty good but it's missing one thing what is this environment being lit by Good point, a muzzle flash. Ah, yes. All right, so now it's time to bring everything together. We need a couple things. We need a zombie, of course, and then we need muzzle flashes. And the important thing with these zombie plates when you put them in there is that the lighting angle matches. As we can see, there's a muzzle flash right here to the right, and we have a plate that we really specifically put to this left side and angle the light from right to left so that we get the right kind of catch light on it. And then you just do that like 20 more times and you got yourself a zombie jumping around in space and time. You just go boop, boop. This is a Schrodinger's cat video after all, so I figured I had to sneak in a little bit of cat in the shot. So we'll bring all that together with some big muzzle flashes and visual effects. And yeah, they're looking pretty good. I'm gonna adjust them a little more still. They got some sparks. This is a great yeah. shot. This, is, yeah. this is pretty good. Heck yeah.
All right, so Superposition is out now on Corridor Digital, our other YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below. Go check it out. I would love to know what you thought. We worked really hard on it here at Corridor. So take a look. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you want to see in the third episode.